That's our Rayfield School Bell. The day has begun. Let's get started. Good morning, Rayfield. It is a wonderful Wednesday morning. We are all excited about learning more about water and the importance of making sure that we are always hydrated. And of course, we also have our life skill lesson that we will follow up on again today. Well, first, congratulations, guys. We did have our first COVID vaccine distribution last Wednesday. That's right, it's been one week ago that they came out from the CDC and distributed the vaccine to our beautiful community and our students here at Rayfield. Well, let me tell you guys, once again this weekend, we were fortunate enough to have the COVID vaccine Pfizer distributed on this past Saturday here at Rayfield. We are so proud of Rayfield as an agency to be able to help the community that's right guys they'll be back again on may 5th 
and then they'll be back again on May 13th to distribute the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine for those who got it on Saturday. And if there are those in the community or in our families, group homes, and just our relatives or anybody who we can share with, please let them know that we do have the Pfizer vaccine at Rayfield. They can register by calling the 800 number 1-800-913-5481. We are so excited about helping whenever and wherever we can. Well, let's get our day started. We're going to talk for a few minutes about water. We talked about how water affects the hardening of our arteries and how important it is to make sure that we are hydrated at all times. And we also talked about how water has damaging minerals and damaging um, toxins in the water that harm our arteries and our brain. We talked about premature aging. So let's look at some signs of premature aging. Do you show any of these signs? Have you ever started to lose skin tone? Is your muscle tone, your energy, your hair the same as it's always been? Do small things irritate you? Are you forgetful and sometimes confused? Are you sluggish or feeling tired quite frequently? Do you have aches and pains? And do you easily give out of breath? Do you have any back or body pain? Do you have any cold or heat sweats? Ask yourself these questions. Am I healthy and happy? Do I seem to be slipping a little behind? Start today. Let's start today by watching these things and making sure that we are happy and healthy at all times. We talked before our previous lessons about joints and joint pains. And we talked about strokes. Remember I told you I was reading a book by Paul Braggs and he told us how his grandfather had a stroke from drinking the water that had limestone deposits and different toxins in the water. We want to be careful to watch out for our joints. Many of pe- many people from all walks of life are suffering from joint pain. They're having problems with their wrist, their elbows, their knees, and their ankles. So we want to look at these types of things and see we do not want to be crippled or have a painful arthritis when we get older. So this is another reason why we must drink our six to eight glasses of water per day. Remember that we discussed some typical diseases like osteoporosis and joint pain, gallbladder pain, all of those types of pains. In general, we want to do a better job of taking care of our nervous system. Well, in Mr. Bragg's books, he talks about how he helped a couple, an elderly couple, to become vibrant again just by drinking water. So let's listen to this story and see how he helped them. The name of the couple were the Wilsons, and he stopped by their apartment quite frequently because they were friends of his. So one Saturday when he stopped by Mr. Wilson's apartment, he could clearly see that Mr. Wilson was ill. He was running a high fever, and he also was congested and could barely breathe. 
He went to his best room, which was overheated and had very little oxygen in the room. The poor man looked so very sad and so very unhealthy. Well, I feel so sick, Mr. Braggs. Can you help me? Am I dying? I told him confidently, I can definitely help you. I knew I could help him, but I wondered before I helped him if he had enough strength mentally and was he passionate about really wanting help. Okay, so I got started. Today, I will start a 10-day cleanse with you, Mr. Wilson. I will pick up the bottles by your bedside table. He had tons of medication by his bedside. And he knew, I knew that I would need to get rid of them eventually. So I brought him some distilled water and I purchased apple cider vinegar and lemons and honey for him and started him on his first day fast. It was not easy for this man to fast. Mr. Wilson was so full of toxins and so full of sticky music, mucus in his head and throat and lungs that he had a great deal of discomfort and trouble breathing. He was an Englishman with plenty of fortitude. He passed a lot of toxic waste from his body. And at the end of the 10 day fast, he felt so much better. I put him on a natural live food diet consisting of fresh fruits, vegetables, juice, and distilled water. And within three weeks, he was so healthy that he climbed the flight of stairs in our apartment, which was something he had not done in seven years. His wife became enthusiastic about his natural way of living and began to follow the program herself. She started to shed so many pounds that she could not believe it herself. After six months, you could not tell who the Wilsons were. You couldn't even believe that they were the same people. They were healthier, they were stronger, and they were happier. Mr. Wilson came to my apartment twice a day, and Mrs. Wilson looked trim and slim and had all of her clothes taken in. Their married daughter came to see them from Canada, and she could not believe her eyes. She said, my mom and dad look healthier than me. What have you done? The Wilson's health troubles were gone. They were now enjoying a life full and, and very, very happy. They were the first two people that I helped, according to Mr. Braggs, Paul Braggs, and he called this treatment his healthy living lifestyle. Now, I want you to note that he started these young people or elderly people on distilled water. So we're gonna talk more about distilled water and the types of water that have toxins in them that we should not drink. Now let's move on to our life skill lesson for today. We've talked about water and we'll talk more about water later in the week. Our life skill lessons for today is as follows. Okay guys, good morning again. Of course it's Wednesday and it's a wonderful Wednesday. We're going to talk for a few minutes. Our life skill lesson today is about compassion. Let's see, what does compassion mean? If someone shows kindness, caring, and willingness to help others, they are showing compassion. This is a word for a very positive emotion that has to do with being thoughtful 
and decent. When you have compassion, you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes and really feeling for them. Three examples of compassion might be to open the door for someone, to pick up someone's glasses if they drop them on the floor, to motivate others, to practice actual acts of kindness, to bond with your family and your friends, to say encouraging words to other people, to hug or give a handshake, to always say thank you, please and thank you, or maybe to help someone else with their to-do list. In our readings today about water, we talked about Mr. and Mrs. Wilson and how Paul Braggs helped them to rejuvenate their health by creating a fast for them that would help them to revitalize their bodies and help them become mentally and physically stronger. That's an example of compassion. You see this gentleman riding on the bus or train and letting another gentleman lean on his shoulder that's an act of compassion. Being there for someone else, helping someone else, being sympathetic to their needs. Those are examples of compassion. Well, guys, I think that it is important for us to be compassionate as individuals. It is a part of our lifestyle to be a better person. It also requires us to be mentally tough. Even though we are compassionate and we care about others, we have to make sure that we are improving our lives and being tough and making sure that we can overcome our challenges, even in our compassion for other people. As noted earlier, mental toughness requires patience and compassion. Sometimes we feel frustrated, but that does not mean that we can't still be patient and compassionate. To that end, let's quickly examine 10 ways that we can toughen up our mind and still be compassionate in doing so. And then, Throughout the rest of the week, as we look at compassion and mental toughness, we will talk more about these emotions. Benefit number one, greater resilience to negative emotions. Emotions are always a double-edged sword. On one hand, they allow us to experience joy and motivate us to action, and they help us to feel compassionate toward others. And of course, on the other hand, then there's the flip side. Sometimes we have a little anxiety, a little stress when those things occur. Benefit number two, it improves our performance. Peak performance stems from your mindset. Feeling great about yourself improves your performance. Benefit number three, confidence that circumstances will improve. When we are compassionate and mentally tough, we are feeling that we are in control and that we can make things better with our better attitude. Benefit number four, we have a greater ability to manage our stress when we are positive and mentally tough. Benefit number five, we are less susceptible to doubt ourselves. When we have faith and confidence and we are compassionate toward others, we feel better about ourselves. Benefit number six, we have greater clarity regarding our intentions. We know that we have the best interests of others at heart 
And that is the underlying meaning for all of our actions. Benefit number seven, fearlessness. Fear of the unknown is one of the most common obstacles in achieving our full potential. When we feel fearless that we are going to be successful, we place ourselves at enormous value and we move ahead and mental toughness erodes fear. Benefit number eight, we have the ability to accept and learn from our failures. Just moving forward. As we say in April, springing forward. Benefit number nine, we have a greater ability to delay gratification. Given a choice, we prefer to experience instant gratification. Everybody does. However, when we are confident in ourselves and we are compassionate about helping others, we don't have to worry about gratification. It will come. And then last but not least, guys, benefit number 10. We tend to hold on to things that cause us emotional pain. But benefit number 10 is the willingness to let it go. We know that there are going to be better days, that there's a bright side, and that even if we've made a mistake, we're going to be able to move forward. So as we spring forward at Rayfield, we're saying to you guys that mental toughness and compassionate attitudes are those that bring forth positive results. Let us move forward, Rayfield. We are springing forward in April. We are COVID free. We have the vaccine on the 5th and the 3rd of May coming soon. We are Rayfield strong and we are all excited about doing a great job of becoming a better person one day at a time. I'm so excited for Rayfield. We have become the provider of the vaccine. We're providing for the community. We're providing through our food pantry. We're providing through the vaccine, through the CDC. We have our classes here at Rayfield, our life skill classes that everyone are excited about. And of course, we are excited to share and to be there for our students and our community. Well, great guys, it is a wonderful Wednesday and we will be springing forward. Let's have a great day.